Well, again, we've been focused on this and we're confused, troubled, and just confounded really about the New York Times' decision to run this crossword puzzle. Donald Trump Jr. and a lot of other folks pointing out that it looks a lot like a swastika in the negative. It was published coincidentally, according to the New York Times, on the first night of Hanukkah. Is it really a coincidence though? Let's welcome in now Rabbi Michael Shavik from the uh, Alliance for Enlightened Judaism. Great to have you with us, Rabbi. Thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. So you think it's just a coincidence that this looks a lot like a swastika and the New York Times published it on the first night of Hanukkah? Well, to the best of my knowledge, the, uh, in the, the Independent in, in London has, has said that the New York Times apologized and that it was just happenstance. It's just how black boxes lay out on, on uh, crossword puzzles. And so they've denied that they've intentionally done that. But that's not the issue here, John. That, that's not the issue. The issue is if they didn't do it, but they were aware it looked like a swastika, should they have released it? I don't know. I didn't speak to the New York Times representatives. The other side of the issue is should people glom right onto this and use it as an accusation to disfigure and demean the people at the New York Times? The problem here is that there is no responsibility. Right. And in the United States of America, we don't outlaw the swastika. Germany does. And if we're going to keep our freedom of the press and our freedom to speak, even about heinous beliefs, we've got to have responsibility on both sides. No, it's a fair point. Uh, you know, we, we, we got to be very careful about limiting the First Amendment and your right to speech. And you don't want to get arrested for using a swastika, but it's helping you explain how horrible Nazism actually was. I think your other question, too, is, is a perfectly valid one. I'd love to ask anyone at The New York Times and say, did you take a step back and at least look at this and decide to release it anyway and say, yeah, maybe it does look like a swastika, but coincidence, whatever. Um, the other issue here, too, though, as it relates to The New York Times, you can forgive the crossword puzzle, as it were, but you know some of the other op-eds have been very critical of Israel and Israel's right to exist as well. And you could say that is a more clear-cut example, especially some of these recent op-eds, a more clear-cut example of anti-Semitism at the New York Times. Well, look, I don't have a problem with people's opinions. I only have a problem if people are going to wipe me off the face of the earth. People can have as many opinions as they want. And I got to tell you, a swastika to an East Indian is a wholly sacred design. You know, I just want to say that. So, you know, but isn't the it the, it's the other way around, I believe, correctly? It's, it's, no, there are it's two the versions. Same. Okay. There, there is a swastika and an aswastika, which is left sided. So we are in a pluralistic society as well. Look, Israel has been controversial since the day the pagan Roman Empire conquered Judea and Christendom. And Western civilization was founded goodly on an anti-Jewish bias. That has continued through Western civilization. It has somewhat abated within Christianity, but yet it is still present. And you're not going to erase anti-Jewishness and anti-Semitism until Western civilization deals with the difficulties between Roman universalism and the Jewish universalist viewpoints, which are different. Mm. It is a it is a it is a complicated question indeed, and one of course has confounded so many. Uh, real quickly, Rabbi, as we as we say goodbye to you, just want to get your thoughts on uh, night number two for Hanukkah. What does this mean to you, the holiday, and what should all Americans uh, think about as they uh, reflect on Hanukkah? That we have to have our essence in our country. That when we become attacked by foreign ideas and foreign thinking, and we lose our essence. That's the time to create a little bit of a war and light the candles in the temple again. You know, without Hanukkah, there would be no Christianity. There would be no Judaism. There would be no Islam. Western civilization would be completely gone because the God who is the creator of all life and the God who is the redeemer of human history would have been wiped off the face of the earth. As a so Christian, everyone... As a Christian, we were reminded of this just yesterday in church on the story of Joseph and Mary and their 
trip to Bethlehem. Uh, and also, you know, on a lighter note, we wouldn't have so many of these great Christmas songs either without so many great Jewish American songwriters as well. We have to tip our hat to them uh, for that. And I do have, a, I do have Christmas envy too because I like the songs. <laughs> Well, uh, we can celebrate both, and it's great when they happen at the same time like they are this year, uh, virtually, very close to each other. Uh, it's just a reminder of, of how similar we are, you know, Christians and Jews, not how different we are.